Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Come on in the room. Come on in the house. Welcome again. Welcome. Everybody's lining up this morning. All right, all right. We believe that you have gotten up this morning to thanksgiving and praise on your hearts and in your homes. That the music of the Lord, praise and worship has been resounding. I know there may have been some fussing and some feuding going on in the homes and children didn't want to do what they wanted to do and <coughs> don't touch me and uh, attitudes and all of that. But this is the day the Lord has made. We will still choose to rejoice and be glad in this day. Amen. I am Pastor Dale Fondo. Our, I'm with New Life Church of God. Our home base is in Palmetto, Louisiana. But we're so grateful that on this first Sunday of March in the year 2022, that we can go house to house. In two weeks, we will expand our coverage of our services as we will add uh, and, uh, an in-person gathering in two weeks on the 20th of March. Uh, but uh, in the time being, we continue in our online services. And we're so grateful that you gather to position yourselves in a place where you can receive the word, that the word can fall on good soil. The song says, what a friend we have in Jesus, all of our sins, all of our griefs to bear. What a wonderful friend we have in Jesus. Jesus is the subject. Jesus is the reason for this church's existence, New Life Church of God. We are a non-denominational church. Our doors are open in the fellowship. Everyone, we reach our hands in fellowship to every blood-washed one, believing in the message of unity, that God has but one church. We're grateful to be just a part of that church and want to expose people to the greater church, that we are a part of the church universal. As long as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. If you've tuned in today and you're uncertain about the Lordship of Jesus Christ in your life, I want you to know that you're still in the right place this morning. As we have not come to, come to condemn, but we have come to partner in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ as he died on Calvary's cross to redeem you, to redeem me. And so as we look into the word, as the, Lord, the word gives light and understanding unto this wonderful plan of salvation, uh, how wonderful and true it is. Well, as we enter on this first Sunday of, uh, of March, we know that we find ourselves at the beginning of the Lenten season. And uh, today, as uh, we encourage continually this discipleship journey, a renewal a strengthening of our lives. We do that not just for 40 days of Lent, but we encourage that throughout the year as we take on the disciplines of our faith, as we deny self and allow our spirit persons to really excel and to control our lives and find out that as Jesus works in us, he's truly the answer for the world today. So what a blessing it is to know that we can walk through this season, this wonderful time of the year uh, leading up to Resurrection Sunday on Easter Day. And we recognize that uh, this is a wonderful time. So as folks are busy kind of taking off some things in their lives, putting some things off, trying to focus sharply on um, the presence of the Lord in their lives, we also, in, in, in addition, encourage putting on. And so that's why we uh, typically and traditionally here at New Life uh, exercise six weeks of love, understanding that we can put on love as we have been teaching in our midweek time on Wednesdays, the importance of love because there is the absence of love. So much hatred, so much anger, so little, so little skills. There is a poor skill set and how to deal with emotions, and how to deal with our anger, and how to deal with our divisions. There's such a poor skill set, but heaven offers the ultimate and offers us agape love, that pure, undefiled, God kind of love 
And so we're engaging uh, in the exercise of adding love, agape love into our lives, loving the Lord our God with everything that we have and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. And so all of that becomes so key uh, as we engage ourselves in the word in this Lenten season. Well, friends, we're going to have our opening word of prayer. What a wonderful privilege it is that on this day we can unite ourselves together uh, in a time of prayer. Uh, our world is in dire need for the presence of the Lord. Uh, there have been many of you who 2022 have, has come with, um, with so many challenges. Uh, hearts are broken. Hearts are aching. The Lord understands that. Uh, but what a friend we have in Jesus. He bears all of our sorrows, all of our sufferings. What a wonderful friend we have in Jesus. And we just encourage you to look to Jesus more and more and more as you go through life, as you go through these days. The Lord knows he's with you uh, even as we look abroad and to see not just wars that exist in, in Europe, in Ukraine in particularly, but even wars on the, on the African continent. As we bear witness unto that, our prayerful support uh, for humanity, uh, humanity that's in need of a savior, need and a need of spiritual awakening. Let's hasten and tell him as we go to God in prayer. Father, we give you thanks and praise for an opportunity to glorify your name today. And we bless your name. We thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ. He died for our sins. He paid the price and he rose again. And we celebrate the risen Lord and Savior. You ask us how we know he lives. He lives within our hearts. Thank you, Jesus, for living within our hearts today and every day. And even as we've come, we bring the, the needs of the hour. You know, those who are tuning in today, Lord God, we pray your blessings upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Meet the needs of their lives. Those who are brokenhearted, I thank you, Lord, that the anointing of the Lord of the Lord is upon you, Lord Jesus, and that you have come to heal the brokenhearted. And we thank you for your healing mercies. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit that's upholding and strengthening lives and families today as they move forward, oh God. Father, we pray for our world today. What the world needs now is love. And we pray that agape love will fill hearts that have been hardened unto you and unto the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray for our world leaders near and far. Give them a special unction, a special understanding, Lord God. Give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation that they may know you better as they engage in leadership, O oh Lord. We pray for the body of Christ all over the world. We give heaven permission to reign and to fall upon us as we actively agree together that Jesus Christ is Lord. Welcome in our midst, welcome in our fellowship. Strengthen us and bless us as only you can. We open our hearts, our minds, our spirits unto you and a fresh move of heaven upon earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Let the body of Christ say amen, amen. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful privilege I have in uh, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, even as we do that, uh, we ready ourselves for day one of week one of our six weeks of love. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Old Testament. As uh, uh, we share, today is the first day of the week of consecration. And uh, in the book of Joshua, one of my favorite consecration scriptures, and I just had to share that with you on this morning uh, as we ready ourselves for the battle, as we ready ourselves for what God is desiring to do in our lives and even in the world and how we can partner with what the kingdom of God is doing. Joshua chapter three, I want to read the first five verses for our hearing. This morning, our message is entitled simply, Consecrate Yourselves. Consecrate Yourselves. Joshua chapter three, verse one, as you have your Bibles, you may follow along. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. 
After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the Ark. Do not go near it. In verse 5, Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Ah, wonderful. Consecrate yourselves is the title of our message on this morning. And as we've made re reference, we are beginning our six weeks of love as we are looking at adding some things to our lives. And uh, as we prepare to do that, we will understand the importance of consecrating ourselves because what we're doing, what we're engaging in is not uh, a fleshly work, but it's a spiritual work. And we want the spirit person within us, our spirit persons, to arise and to be strengthened for times that we live in today. And so at the beginning of our but six weeks of love, I'm reminded on our midweek time, as Miss Pat reminding us, he says, she says, it's really 52 weeks of love compacted into six weeks. Uh, I thought that was a beautiful way of expressing that, that love is not just to be added to our lives just for six weeks, but for 52 weeks, every week, every day of every year that we live in, if we're saying that um, what the world needs now is love, uh, with, the, with, the, with the void of so much love, it's the church's opportunity to arise, to live out love, to proclaim love in all that we do, in all that we say. There is a void there that we can fit into, and I believe that it can be just a, a multiplying uh, agent. It can, be, it can be yeast unto the bread that will allow it to really multiply as we're stepping up and, and people recognize love. And I think that they'll be so open into love, so open into a fresh move, a fresh blowing of the Spirit of God that is captivated by acts of love, loving the Lord our God with all that we have and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. What a wonderful message that is that we can proclaim. And so as we move forward in this time as a group of people, those of you who are part of our uh, formal New Life membership, if you will, and those of you who are joining us online continually, uh, what a wonderful privilege it is to do that. And I sense that we are at one of the critical junctions in the life, not just of our church, but in the life of the world. We are at a critical juncture, and it's gravely important that the body of Christ, that God's church, would really emerge in times like this. It's a critical time. It's a time that we find ourselves at a crossroads with, with, with so much happening, and we're believing in the disintegration of this COVID pandemic. We're at a crossroads. Either we are go back to being a group of Christians who just do nice things, or we will move ahead impacting lives, impacting families, impacting communities as never before. So it's a wonderful juncture. We're just identifying that we're at a juncture. And even we, we can go back to doing church as church would do things, or that we can decide that we want to impact lives around us. We want to impact the areas in which we live, the areas in which we serve like never before. And we're impacting it not for the sake of New Life Church of God, but impacting it for the sake of the kingdom of God. And we're calling on churches near and far to arise and impact our world for the sake of the kingdom of God. That's what we're building. That's what we're participating in building and not building a church 
so that we can be recognized, but participating in that, recognizing that we're building the kingdom of God. Uh, friends, we recognize that people are hurting today. Oh, they're hurting. They're hurting. They're looking for answers. They're looking for a way. They're looking for a salve on their lives. They're looking for some type of healing, some type of device or mechanism or substance that can just help them deal with the pain in life that they're living through. People are hurting today. They want better. People are looking for a change. Uh, they want to feel good about themselves. They want a, a fresh start. They want victory in their lives. They want victory for their children and for those in their families. People are hurting and they're looking for answers. Oh, and it's time for the body of Christ to arise with answers that will last, with, with answers that you may try to legislate against, but the answers are true. The answers are real. The answers are dynamic. You and I, friends, have an opportunity to share the healing and the nurturing love of God upon lives near and far. Our communities they're in need of a fresh dose of, of hope. They're in need of, of a positive movement. We want to be a part of that, that movement of hope, that positive movement. I mean, the landscape of our communities are being threatened every day, even from the future existence of our schools and the empowerment of our kids, even to economic Im improvement. Even as we're living through a time of recession, people are looking for answers, looking for hope. And even as we cast our bread upon the waters, we know that it will return. And we thank the Lord for that good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, that comes back unto us as we recognize the answers that we have for our world, for our area today the dire needs that we find in our, in our communities. We're believing for a brighter day. We're believing for a miracle. We're believing for the move of God in our area, in things that maybe we have overlooked or don't even equate as far as church stuff, in a church building stuff. Ah, we live in a time that folk are looking for answers. They know they can't turn to our political leaders, our political leaders, are just out for it for themselves seemingly many times. And so as a church, we can't come across as just looking out for ourselves, looking out for the church, me and mine. But we're here to look out for the world around us because that's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did. What did Jesus say on, on the cross? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Many of us would have prayed the prayer, God, get them, get them, knock them all down, kill them. But Jesus showed us how to show love, how to live out love in the world around us. And so when we talk about all of the things that our, our communities need from our children and their education to employment, to gainful employment, to housing needs being met, to us, to an economy uh, that will be stronger, you may ask the question, what does that have to do with us? What does that have to do with the church? And friends, may I suggest that it has everything to do with us. It has everything to do with us. And scripture backs it up. Scripture has informed us on this. When Paul writes to Timothy, that, that, that Christian leader, that pastor, as he writes to Timothy and to the church, uh, he tells them to intercede for everybody, leaders and everybody, so that they can live in peace. Uh, that was the instruction to the pastor. We see in the Old Testament, the prophecy of Isaiah. We see that he speaks uh, up to that the prosperity of the land is dependent upon the people of God. Isaiah chapter 61. That the, that the prosperity of the land is dependent upon the people of God. And so what a blessing and what an opportunity that you and I have, uh, not just to major in, in, in condemnation of the world against, uh, uh, against them. We, we know sin is sin, but to, to, to change our major, to change our major to a major of love, of loving our community, of loving our neighbor. 
What a wonderful opportunity there is for us. You know, we've always said that we're not here as a church just to play church or just to go through the move, the move, the, the motions of being a church. We've asked ourselves on a couple of occasions, is this the time for us to close our doors at, as a church? Or is, does God still want to use this local body that's called New Life Church of God? And we have sincerely asked ourselves the question as we've celebrated milestones in the church. We've celebrated anniversaries in the church. We've asked ourselves the question, is this it? Do we need to close our doors because we're no longer being impactful in our community? Asking ourselves the question, if New Life Church of God went out of business tomorrow, would our area miss us? Would our area know that the church has closed its doors? And so we're serious about asking ourselves questions like that. Are we, are, are we participating in the redemptive purposes of God? And so we're believing that our job isn't done yet. We're not here to play church. We're here in recognizing that the world is still on the heart of Jesus. And that means that God will act among us. Since the world is still on the heart of Jesus, we're convinced that God will therefore work among us. I mean, we have seen him work among us before, and we're believing that he's going to do it again in new ways, in a new normal for the church. Oh, it may be uncomfortable because we are unfamiliar with what the new normal will turn out to be for a church that's actively engaged in God's redemptive purposes and not so much just being engaged in what the church does and in a church's calendar. But we're believing that the Lord will work in new ways in a new normal. And so, beloved, we simply need to be ready. Ergo, this is why we are engaging in six weeks of love as we are taking seriously this Lenten season as a time of preparation for a fresh move of God upon the earth in our area. We need to be ready for something special. As Jesus told the parable of the ten virgins with the, virgins with the lamps, uh, they did not keep their lamps trimmed and burning. Many of them did not. They were not in a time of readiness. We want to be in a time of readiness for what God is desiring to do. We do, do not want to hinder his work, but we want to be a part of the work of God. We recognize that uh, God is calling uh, for us, that uh, he has a calling for us that is so wonderful so wonderful that maybe we can't even fathom the calling that God would have for us. And so we're simply saying we need to be ready. We need to be beyond just putting on our play clothes and be clothed in God's righteousness, putting on play clothes. I have a godchild that likes to put on uh, his Spider-Man uniform. And when he has a Spider-Man uniform, he will tell you, I am Spider-Man, I'm Spider-Man, I can do everything Spider-Man does as he's simply there walking and running on the floor and not on the walls and the ceilings and the light. Play clothes, I'm just saying, play clothes. And how many of us can, we really put on play clothes of righteousness because we're always putting down our religion? Oh, let me handle this in a different way. You don't know that I, I gotta handle this in my way. Play clothes. And what we're saying as we are engaging in this wonderful Lenten time of the year, this is an opportunity to no longer be satisfied with play clothes, but to put on God's righteousness. And so in our text of scripture today, Joshua uh, chapter three, we see the people of God, uh, God had promised them a land, the promised land, Canaan land. The people had been in slavery uh, for a long time, and God sent Moses uh, as a deliverer, and uh, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And as we enter into Joshua chapter 3, they are on the brink 
of crossing over into the land that God has promised. And as they were on the brink of, uh, of something wonderful, they could see it right there, but they were not there yet. They were not there in that land. It was just right across the river. And what, uh, and what do we see going on? And in this scripture, we see that there were those leaders who had gone across the officers, telling people, giving them orders to watch the Ark of the, of the Covenant of God, representing the presence of God, telling the people to watch the presence of God, look for the presence of God, because where we're going, we've never been before. So wherever we go, we want to watch the presence of God. Oh, what a beautiful story. What a beautiful analogy that we can use that as we enter into a new norm, we've never been there before. But keep your eye out for the presence of the Lord. And as we keep our eye, eyes open for the presence of the Lord, we'll know which way to go and what God has ordained for us. And so as the, the officers were telling the people the instructions of keeping your eye on the ark, keeping your eye on the presence of the Lord, in verse 5, Joshua speaks to the people and he tells them, as they prepare to cross over into the promised land, he tells them, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do amazing things among you. I'm telling you, this is why... This passage is one of my favorite consecration passages. It's awesome. Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Can you receive that? Oh, some of you can just take that and to say, Pastor, I've heard enough. The word is for me. It's a rhema word for me. I am going to consecrate myself to allow the Lord to do amazing things among me. What a wonderful word that is. Man, that's a powerful word. So Joshua goes around to all the people. They didn't have social media back then. They didn't have a loud speaker system back then. And he went around to the people, consecrate yourselves, consecrate yourselves. It was a word to everybody. Consecrate yourselves. You consecrate yourselves. You consecrate yourselves. You consecrate yourselves. You because tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. He's not going around telling the people to check your shields and check your spears and sharpen your swords. Uh, he, instead, it's an issue of consecration. The battle is the Lord's. The battle has been the Lord's. And so it's an issue of consecration. The Lord is going to do amazing things among you. So friends, as we engage and embark in this Lenten season upon six weeks of love, I proclaim the same word that Joshua told the people of God then, consecrate yourselves for the Lord will do amazing things among you. He will do amazing things among you. Why should you consecrate yourselves? Why should you give special attention to this Lenten season? Why should you consecrate yourselves? Friends, I'm believing, and I know that the Lord wants to do amazing things for you. I believe that. Why should you even give uh, note? Why should you even give place to consecrating and some of the instructions and the guidance and the spiritual disciplines that are there? Let me just keep on eating my uh, eating my boudin like I want to eat my boudin. Let me keep on eating my hog cracklings like I want to eat my hog cracklings. Let me keep on eating my fried chicken and my fried pork chops. Let me keep on living, living like I want to live. Let me keep on being dominant on my social media pages. Let me keep on trying to get over on people and trying to win the lottery. Let me try to win the gaming institutions so that I can have something for myself. Consecrate yourselves for God, God, not government. God, God will do amazing things among you. Reasons to consecrate ourselves, consecrate yourselves. So the question may immediately arise, but what does it mean to consecrate yourself? What, do, what does the concept of consecration even mean? Well, consecrate 
means to dedicate something or someone to a specific purpose. Consecrate, dedicate something or someone for a specific purpose. It means to set apart for a specific purpose, to make holy, to make available, to purify, to, ded to dedicate, to sanctify. Consecrate yourselves. You know, we're entering into the springtime of the year and we have gardeners among us, those who like to plant gardens, flowers, vegetables, and the like. And what you will see them doing this time of year is literally in exercise, consecrating that area of ground, consecrating, readying it so that it can produce what has been planted. That's consecration in the springtime. Many of you are familiar with that. You just don't go out there and throw your seeds on the ground, on the, on the grass and say, I'm a bear, I'm gonna get a harvest. There's been no consecration. Many times that's how we live for God. We go and cast our seeds out there on our lives and our lives are not prepared to bear what God has in store. Listen, anything that's worth the effort is worth us giving the time to it. We can't be lazy, but yet you get up and, at two o'clock in the morning to go to your job because you gotta be at your job but that you can't spend extra time with God because it isn't worth it. Consecrate yourselves. Some of you know um, that many times when a husband and a wife has their first child, there are changes that takes place in their home, okay? They have to make room for that baby when that baby arrives. And so a room many times is set aside. Okay, it's clean and the old stuff in that room is taken out and new furniture is brought in and the walls are painted and curtains are changed and the floors are changed because it's now a nursery. Whatever that room was before, another bedroom, now it's becoming a nursery. It has been dedicated for a purpose dedicated for a purpose. It's been set aside. It's been sanctified. It's been consecrated as a nursery. It's now the cleanest house in the room. Oh yes, oh yes. Because that's where the new baby, that's where this first baby is going to live. Consecrated, set aside for something special. And so beloved, you and I, we have been called to be consecrated to God, to be set apart for somebody special, our creator, our sustainer, our God. God wants us to be ready for him. It's more than just going through church rituals week in and week out, but it's about getting our hearts right. It's about drawing close to God. It's about putting our attention on God throughout each and every day. See, the children of Israel, in our text of scripture, they had to get ready. They had to get ready. Consecrate yourselves, for God's going to do some amazing things among you. I mean, they had to be available. And we're saying that consecration is a part of that, of being made available for God to use, for God to bless for God to shower down upon us because God is coming to do something. So he wants a prepared people, a ready people, a people who would consecrate themselves. The gospel of Mark chapter one, verse three, it lifts up the passage from, uh, from Isaiah when it says, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so in our life, you and I are being called to prepare the way for the Lord. You may say, all oh, folk around me don't want to move of God. People aren't living like God is real. But listen, what about you? We want to be used to help prepare the way, to make straight this new normal that we're engaged in, this new opportunity that God has in store for us, this opportunity for you and I to usher in a season of agape love upon the earth. We prepare ourselves for him. And in our life, prepare the way of the Lord. 
And as we ready ourselves for our prayer of consecration, two things I share with you as a reminder. Number one, purify yourselves. Purify yourselves. Let's purify ourselves. See, there are some things in our lives that really have to go. When we check ourselves, there's some things that's not pleasing unto God. There's some things about us that are not honoring God. And so as a part of the consecration, what, what can I do? Well, purify yourselves. Things in our lives that have to go. Those attitudes, those ambitions that are not godly, those dreams that have nothing to do with the kingdom of God, they have to go. God wants us to be pure inside. He wants us to be pure inside. There's going to be some struggle involved. Yes, understand that. Everything in scripture will let you know of the struggle as we give ourselves, as we submit ourselves unto God. But we're going to commit ourselves afresh to this struggle. Various habits have to be broken. Relationships that don't honor God, they need to be brought under control. Our thoughts need to be cleaned up. Our language, our conversation needs to be transformed and impacted. That's what it means to consecrate ourselves. This has to happen. Our eyes need to be open as, as far as what God needs to be doing. And so how do you consecrate yourselves? You, you, you purify yourselves, number one. Number two, you, you set aside your time. These are two things that I, I want to lift out there. Several more I could, but those two things in, in purifying ourselves, cleaning ourselves up, identifying those things, Lord, take them away. Take them away. Even as we participate in fasting and there becomes that longing for food and that longing to allow our stomachs to keep on controlling us. But when the Spirit of God has identified some measures in our lives, some habits in our lives have got to go, we spend those times that we're struggling in prayer. God, take it away. Holy Spirit, remove this from me. I surrender myself. I give it unto you. I lay it on the altar. Purify yourselves. And the second piece, that second line that we lift up is to set aside your time, consecrate your time. And so even for these next six weeks, in setting aside some time, in looking at your calendar, looking at your schedule, looking at your priorities, to give extra time to God, extra time for the reading of the Bible or even the listening of the Bible with all the Bible apps out there, even as you're driving your vehicles, you can just link that. You can Bluetooth your phone onto your, spe your speakers in your car and you can listen to the word as you're riding. Again, availing those, that, that time, what you were listening to before, hey, you can avail some extra time in reading the scriptures and praying and in turning off some of our devices and allowing just that extra time with God <clears throat> that we can consecrate ourselves. You know, take time away from the games that you're playing that you can consecrate. And this is not an, this is not a, I'm not just talking to, to people 60 years old and over. I'm even talking to our kids. Our kids need to be exposed to the awesomeness of God. They don't need to be babyfied and hopefully by the time they're 30, they'll love the Lord. They need to be trained in righteousness. And so this time of consecration is for all is for all as we recognize that and we're simply wanting to develop some elbow room for God that he doesn't have to feel that he is elbowed out of our lives and purifying ourselves and consecrating our time uh, we, we, we give elbow room for God God come on in come on in I know you want to do some amazing things among me and my family and my neighborhood, and my community, and my school, and my place of employment, and in the economy that I'm living in. I know you want to do amazing things. God, I'm making some elbow room for you that you can just come on in. See, there are all kinds of things that clutter up our lives, just like those things that clutter up our houses. Lord have mercy. We need to get rid of the things that are standing in the way of something that's much more important manifesting and taking part of our lives. 
something more important that we need in our lives. We're cleaning it out. We're, we're, we're cutting the clutter. We're cleaning out the corners. We are consecrating ourselves for a fresh move of God. This time of year is a time that I know many of you like to engage in spring cleaning, that you will spend a Saturday, you will spend a day in, uh, in just cleaning stuff. I'm just cleaning, 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 cleaning. What a wonderful picture that is for us spiritually, that God wants to do some cleaning, 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 cleaning in our lives, that even as we give ourselves to the Lord, we can bless him and to allow him to move as he will. And so therefore, we're just giving ourselves over to the Lord. Ah, just like a spring cleaning, spiritually, this is a cleaning that we can be pleasing and acceptable unto our Lord, unto our Savior. This is how we want to live. This is how we want to show ourselves. Even as we begin this season, this Lenten season, begin this season of showing agape love to the world around us. We want to pray the prayer of consecration this morning as we give ourselves unto the Lord, believing that he can work in our, in our lives in ways we couldn't imagine. I know we want, a, we want a cheap way out of it. God, just bless me. I'm not going to do anything different. Just bless me and do something different. No, no, we want to prepare ourselves. I know we got some lazy folks, some lazy, I don't know, they're followers of Jesus Christ. They just like everything microwaved and easy. We need to be reminded of that ethic that can sustain us spiritually as we give and apply ourselves unto the Lord. My time is up. Let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks and praise, Lord God, for the blessings of this day. And even as we prepare ourselves for that resurrection day on Easter Sunday, that the, that the Christian church all over the world celebrates the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are those who call us foolish. There are those who call us uninformed. There are those who call us whatever. But I thank you for this love that is set in our hearts, oh God that makes a difference and provide, provides an answer to this world. Help us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, as we go through this time of consecration. It'll be some bumps, it'll be some bruises, it'll be some disappointments that we thought what we could do that we're not able to do. Give us wisdom and give us strength, Holy Spirit. Fill us afresh, Holy Spirit, with more and more of God as we give ourselves unto you, Lord. And I thank you for those that are choosing to ready themselves for amazing things of God in a new normal. And give us the insight that we can accept it, that we can understand it as we move forward, oh God. So I thank you for your divine help, your divine guidance, Lord God, in the areas of our lives. Hear the prayer of the one that's giving themselves over to you today, oh God as they surrender their wills unto you. Jesus, be their Savior, be their Lord, be their guide as they move through this season as it's never been before. We give you thanks and praise, Lord God, for salvation. Thank you that you are in the preparation of bringing and sending deliverance unto lives. Folk that have been struggling, Lord God, with addictions and habits, Lord God, you're gonna deliver them as they consecrate themselves <clears throat> unto you, Lord God. It's not about our power, but it's about your power, oh God. Set people free in the name of Jesus. Lord God, may that anger and frustration and hatred, Lord God, may it dissolve and your love manifest itself richly in lives, oh God, that homes will no longer be battlegrounds. Homes will no longer be areas that people fuss and fight and feud. There'll be love that'll be found in a rich way, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing and what you're saying in our midst in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is so real and so powerful, Lord God, that we can sense that. And we know as folk are hurting and they're looking for hope, they're looking for love, they're looking for answers. The body of Christ, servants of the Almighty God, are arising with authority and with power in the earth, O oh Lord, that we are showing your love as we are proclaiming your love. There's a new day dawning. 
Show us, Lord God, the amazing things that you are about to do, things that we could have never imagined. Folk can't take credit for what you're getting ready to do because it will simply be a God thing. <laughs> have your way, oh God, as you, as you do your thing in the earth, Lord God. You have our permission. We're setting up that elbow room for you. Come on in. Do amazing things among your people. Hear our prayer today, O oh God, as we say yes to a time of consecration and moving forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 May the body of Christ say, Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Well, so grateful that you're able to tune in today. And uh, again, as we just embark upon the six weeks of love, we shared this document with you in various forms. We've emailed it to those of you on our email listing. It's on our social media pages also. It's in our church's group me. Uh, the document is found there. As today, this first week, March 6th to the 12th, is a week of consecration. Even through the message, as we have highlighted a couple of ways that we can consecrate ourselves, uh, we're asked to identify a time of fasting. We've talked about fasting in times past. It can be very so much. Uh, there may be those of you who are struggling with health issues and medicines that need uh, food. You have to eat before you take that. Take all of that into consideration various types of fasting, even, even uh, the Daniel fast, fruit, vegetables, uh, and giving ourselves as you have to have something. So just identify sometime during the week, even moving forward towards uh, Resurrection Day, that you can participate in fasting, in developing a prayer list, as we've seen, uh, worship in your homes, worship, worship, worship every day. Seek forgiveness is what the document says. Forgiveness from God, forgiveness from other folk that you feel may have wronged you. Commit yourselves to, to Bible reading. Uh, these are some of the things in addition to what we've shared in the message uh, on, uh, on today as we consecrate uh, ourselves. So we'll move through six weeks. This week is a week of consecration. The second week will be community week. The third week will be a week of prayer. Then it'll be family week, then church family week, and uh, holy week we will call passion week. And so those six weeks of love. So check our social media pages, check uh, your emails, check uh, our group me page as uh, we participate and just believing that God will do something amazing among us as we move forward. Thanks be unto the Lord. Well, as we shared earlier, in two Sundays on the 20th, we will expand our service coverage. As right now, we are on Facebook, uh, uh, Facebook Live, and also later in the day on the church's U YouTube channel. Uh, in two Sundays on March the 20th, we will expand that, um, that base also to include uh, in-person worship as we're gathered at the ministry center there at the campground on um, March the, the, the 20th, our uh, task force on reopening. Again, just wanting to see all the groupings in Mardi Gras and people coming close during that Mardi Gras season, uh, what it will look like and to make sure that we can be as safe as, as possible. But again, wonderful time to use these times as, as um, to consecrate ourselves and not to engage ourselves in some other things that we could say that we'll be doing. So again, so next Sunday, uh, the 13th of March, we'll be right back on these same platforms. And in two Sundays, uh, we will enlarge our uh, platform coverages as we will identify that. Next Sunday will be the beginning of Daylight Savings Time. Next Sunday. So when you go to bed next Saturday night, you will spring forward. You will move your clocks ahead one hour. Uh, some of you are looking forward to the extended evening times where there will be daylight. So daylight savings time begins next Sunday. So next Saturday night before you go to bed, move your clocks 
ahead one hour and you will be right there in line for what's going uh, for what's going forward with that. Uh, let's keep Ukraine in our prayer, the war that Russia has engaged with with Ukraine. As we said on Monday, on Wednesday, I'm sorry, on our Zoom, our Zoom audience, we identified the, the number of churches of God in the nation of Ukraine. Uh, we've discovered that there's been two more to that number. I've also been asked to not even say how many churches that we have, nor to say the locations, because all of this technology, social media, uh, fearful that Russia will go and to identify those areas where the churches and to look those churches out specifically because we've identified where they are and the connections that we have with them. So let's remain in prayer. I sent you a link, a link those of you on our text messages, if you want to uh, hear some of the news, if you want to be able to give that specifically those churches in Ukraine that have been scattered to support those brothers and sisters in Christ, there's a link there that you can even give. Uh, Jesus is the subject.org slash disaster relief. And there will be a giving link. And that link will be sent. Uh, our churches in Germany have good connections, close connections with the churches in Ukraine. And so the churches in Germany uh, will spearhead some of that support uh, that uh, will go forward uh, in that. And so we will identify that. And so if you want to give directly, go to that link, jesusisthesubject.org slash disaster relief and look for the contribution link there. Um, and there can be, there will be a safe, uh, direct way because we have connections with Ukraine, if you will, as a church. Uh, as a matter of fact, on Easter Sunday, we have our missions offering, and, uh, and a lot of that offering, no doubt, will go to support the churches and how they have been impacted in Ukraine. So prepare yourselves even for giving as we have that special offering that's coming up on, uh, on Easter Sunday. So we are highlighting that. Okay, as we ready ourselves, again, uh, just uh, welcome you to participate with us in our six weeks of love, our Lenten season, as we ready ourselves in moving forward. Next Sunday, we'll be back online. In two weeks, we'll gather, we extend uh, our reach to our in-person services starting up in two Sundays on the 20th of March. Until that time, we'll be online. This coming Wednesday, we welcome you, our first 30 minutes, 630 Central, on our New Life uh, Facebook page. Our lesson will go forth as we ready ourselves in this week of consecration, as we will give more attention unto that. Well, I'm going to let you go, and uh, uh, just believing that uh, we have opportunities to love. You know, as I close, uh, I did a little practicing the last couple of days. And, uh, and, you know, we talked about letting folks go ahead of you in line as you're checking out. We talked about how we drive and to, to, to be more uh, uh, loving even as we drive. And so I found out I, I, I'm going to need some more patience. I'm going to need some, some more work on this. This is a, a good timing for me. I'm just driving around town yesterday and I'm like, uh, got kind of frustrated. No, I need to be more loving, show agape love. So it was a good setup for me to know what I need to work on. And uh, so we, we're just gonna believe that everything will go so much smoother, so much uh, better as those, th those pricklings in our spirit about doing something nice, it's from heaven. It's from God and that we can yield unto that. All right, I'm gonna check out our parking lot conversation, but so glad to have each and every one of you tuned in today. May the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful week that we share the agape love, the love of God among folk in our world. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you until next time.
next time, Wednesday night, we'll be on at 6.30 Central, next Sunday, 10 o'clock. The Lord bless you. Daylight savings time begins next Sunday. The Lord bless you.